when friends and family visit me from out of town, they always ask me to produce a list of New York City food recommendations, and it's really difficult because New York City has so many epic eats. A supremely New York food that is often forgotten about are seven layer cookies sold in Italian bakeries throughout Staten Island and Brooklyn. These cookies have a special place in my heart because my mom was also a fan of them and she would always bring home a box of rainbow cookies from the grocery store and they would never live to see more than two nights in our kitchen. They also remind me of the almond drink that I used to have growing up that my dad would always make and this almond paste that we will be using today tastes so much like that flavor. The anatomy of a rainbow cookie consists of seven layers, three layers of almond cake, two layers of jam, and two layers of chocolate. I have three baking trays here, three sheets of parchment paper, and a scissor. I'm going to turn the baking trays over stacked. And I'm going to take one single parchment paper and I'm going to fold it in half vertically. I'm going to align the edges of the parchment paper with the cake pan, creating a perfect square. And where the cake pan ends, I'm going to fold down the sheet of parchment paper and this line is going to become the line that we cut to create two square pieces and one rectangular piece, which will then cut into another two pieces. So we'll be greasing the entire inside of the cake pan, both the bottom and the side, with a light layer of butter, and this will serve as a glue, keeping the parchment papers that we put into the cake pan in place. And this will be extremely helpful and useful when you're spreading the dough inside these cake pans, preventing it from moving at all. So take your stick of butter. It doesn't have to be at room temperature. Even cold butter straight from the fridge transfers really well and cover the entire surface area. And you just wanna make sure that you are applying it with light pressure. Take your square sheet of parchment paper and put it on the bottom of the cake pan. And you wanna make sure that it is not too long. Any extra ripples will result in an uneven Italian cookie layer and you don't want that to happen. Take one of the rectangular pieces and place it on the side. And take the second rectangular piece and place it on the opposite side, covering the entire surface area inside. We have our all-purpose unbleached flour, our granulated sugar, our eggs that are separated into yolks and whites, the almond paste, room temperature butter, almond extract, and food coloring. Almond paste is really dense, making it difficult to incorporate into doughs or batters. And if you add in big chunks of almond paste into your mixture, it could result in translucent yellow globs, which look really unpleasant after you bake them. And they will still be edible, but if you are coloring your batters with other colors, it will be a lot more obvious. One way that you can combat this is by breaking up each of these logs with your fingers into little tiny pieces and throw it into the mixture as it's mixing under the stand mixer. Another way is to take the time to grate each of these logs into a separate bowl, and that is the method that I prefer, although it does take more time. So we'll be adding our butter into this mixing bowl. You wanna make sure that you are using a paddle attachment. This is the standard one that comes with the KitchenAid, but I bought one with a flex etch beater, so every single time that I'm beating the butter, it reduces the amount of scraping that I have to do from the sides. Whenever you're beating something wet, it tends to collect at the bottom and the sides of the bowl, and you have to make sure you scrape it down at least twice in order to make sure that everything is thoroughly incorporated. If your KitchenAid comes with this wire whisk, I don't recommend using this for beating the butter because like the dough hook, the butter will only pass through the tines. We'll be using about three and a half rolls of almond paste and mine are tied together with a staple. So I'm just going to take my scissor and cut off the end. And then I'm going to insert my scissor slightly under the skin of the wrapper and cut off about an inch and a half. And I just want to expose only the end of the stick of almond paste. And this way I can have clean hands as I'm grating. And if it falls apart in chunks like this, it's perfectly fine. Just grab it with your hands and every single time you feel it getting closer to the grater, you just wanna make sure that you collect the glob again. And grate very slowly so you're not grating your fingers. 
And my grater I've had for quite a while, so it's not too sharp where I'll cut myself. But if you have a brand new grater, be sure to be really, really careful. To start, I'm going to lift the head of my KitchenAid attachment so that there's enough clearance between the top and the bottom of the bowl. And I'm going to unwrap the butters and let them fall into the bowl. Since we lined our cake pans earlier, you can just discard these wax papers. Otherwise, you could keep them for another opportunity for when you're baking. There is a lot of butter left on these, especially when you leave it at room temperature. I'm going to lock the stand mixer into place and set it on a low speed and let it mix for about one minute, letting it spread throughout the mixing bowl. All right, once it has spread around the mixing bowl, I'm going to begin adding in my sugar. And you wanna make sure that you're adding this in in a really gradual stream. So I'm going to start it on a low and add in my sugar very, very slowly. visual cues that will indicate that the butter is done creaming is that it turns into a really white color. The reason why the butter turns from a yellow to a white color is because the sugar has burrowed into the butter, creating air pockets, lightening the fat altogether. So you don't need to touch the head of the attachment. We're going to start adding the egg yolks in and you wanna add in two yolks at a time and you wanna make sure that it fully incorporates before you add in the next pair. mixing, start adding in your pieces of almond paste. So since I have an extra stand mixing bowl, I will be whisking the egg whites in a separate bowl with the whisk attachment. And whenever you're whipping egg whites, you need to make sure that the tines and the bowl itself are really clean, oil-free. And one way that you can do this is by washing this with hot water and soap, as well as wiping down any of the surface with vinegar. So I have my egg whites here and I'm going to dump it into the bowl. And I'm going to let this whip until soft peaks form. So take your spatula and add in the egg whites. And I'm going to split this up into about two or three sections. And this is a way of tempering the batter because egg whites is heavy water content. So I'm just going to mix it on medium speed for about 30 seconds each until the egg white looks fully incorporated and then add more egg whites in. So we're going to have this butter and egg white mixture mix on a low speed. As it's mixing, we're going to slowly stream in this flour. Whenever you're adding dry and wet ingredients together, you wanna to make sure you do it really incrementally so you don't break the batter. And I'm going to be adding in this almond extract, which is going to amplify that almond flavor, giving it that rainbow cookie taste that we're looking for. Divide the cookie dough into three different portions representing the three layers of the almond cake that we'll be creating. 
I'm going to directly scoop in the white batter into a baking tray because there's no need to add food coloring to it. And I'm going to be scooping the remainder into mixing bowls so I can add in the food coloring without worrying about making a mess. So if you do have graduating mixing bowls like I do, use the larger ones for this part. So ideally you wanna use a cookie scooper, but since most of you guys at home may not have one, you can go ahead and use a one cup measuring cup. coloring my green and my red cookie dough. I'm using a gel-based food coloring. The ones that you find in the supermarket tend to be water-based, and I never like changing the chemistry of my batter, which is why I will always opt for gel. So I'm just going to take about half a teaspoon at a time, adding more if it's needed, but what we're trying to achieve is a really dark green color, and it's going to lighten after it bakes as well, so don't be afraid to go too dark. And every single time you scoop with a clean butter knife, make sure that you set it aside. I'm going to be using a clean butter knife if I need to scoop more gel into this mixture. So I'm taking an offset spatula and I'm going to mix it until all of these ribbons of food coloring are completely incorporated. And the smell of this almond paste is just so intoxicating. I wish you could smell it with me. And because it's so light and fluffy, it was well creamed, it is easy to mix. So you'll notice that I'm using a glass mixing bowl. And the reason why I like using mixing bowls when I'm coloring is because you can see how much is unmixed by just inverting and taking a peek at the bottom. So now that we've colored our cookie doughs, we're going to transfer each of these colors into a cake tray. And I'm going to use a silicone spatula and make sure to clean it in between every transfer to make sure that the colors don't mix together. The texture almost looks like a bubble gum that has been chewed for too long. Make sure that you are cleaning your spatula in between scoops. The dough and smooth it out into the tray. and turn it every single time to make sure I'm able to bring the dough into the edges. So I have my cake pans ready to go and I'm going to bake the cookies on the center rack in my oven. And I know that my oven can only fit two of these trays at a time, so I'm going to cover the last one while the first two are baking. And I don't want to separate the trays on different racks in the oven because they will cook super unevenly and I don't want to risk overcooking or undercooking any of these layers. So I'm going to pop in two at a time, like I mentioned. It should take anywhere from about 20 to 25 minutes to finish baking these layers. chilling in the freezer for close to 25 minutes and with five minutes of chilling left I'm going to start melting my chocolate. I have a soft pot here that is filled with sink water and don't worry about using filtered water this won't be touching any of the food we will be discarding after it's boiled. So I have chocolate that's in a glass bowl and I like to use glass over steel because I find that it's a lot easier to control in terms of temperature. I'm going to pop it over the pot and let it come to a boil. and I'm going to add in about one and a half tablespoons of butter. Now it's time for assembly. I'm going to place a parchment paper on my work surface and cover it with a cooling rack. And then I'm going to take my first layer of cake 
And you'll notice that after it cools down, it will recede from the sides of the cake pan a little bit, but I'm going to take a plastic bench scraper over a metal one to prevent it from scraping the sides and the coating off of my cake pan. And I'm just going to go around into the sides and the corners. And I just am doing this to make sure that it's a really clean cake. And then with that, I'm going to invert it. All right, it came out really cleanly and I'm just going to gently pull away the parchment paper and wherever it's stuck, you just want to make sure you pull it away really carefully so you're not breaking any of the cake. All right, that looks really good. I'm going to take my apricot jam and I'm going to be putting about one fourth of a cup onto each layer. And if you want, you could put double the amount of jam here to create beautiful layers. I believe that cakes should look as pretty as they are on the outside as they do on the inside once it's sliced because that will be pretty much the main thing that the person that's eating it will see. And you can spread it with a spoon or an offset spatula. And I'm going to align it with my hands. Okay, I'm just taking a scoop of the melted chocolate ganache and I'm just going to place it on top of the first layer and I'm just spooning it with the spatula. And you wanna make sure that you're working really fast with this chocolate because it will stick on and be difficult to maneuver around. All of the chocolate has been scooped on, you can leave it as is, but I'm going to make a clean surface by combing it with a cake comb. Right, I'm just going in with my second layer of chocolate and I want this one to fall over the sides really naturally. So I'm just putting extra chocolate onto the very top of the cake. And then I'm going to smooth it over with a clean bench scraper. I'm just going to let it drip down the sides, creating a beautiful waterfall of glossy chocolate. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this result, so I'm going to let this cake chill in the refrigerator for at least six hours before cutting into it. You wanna make sure that you let this cake rest because the flavors will amplify over time. And even if you overcook the almond cake layers by a little bit, it is very forgiving and this will soften. So I'm going to be transferring my cake over to my cake stand. And whenever you are choosing a cake stand, you wanna make sure that the diameter is at least one to two inches larger than the cake itself. All right, so I have my bench scraper on one side and I'm just going to slide in the plastic I'm going to slide in another bench scraper on the other side. And you wanna make sure that it's right in the middle before you take off the last bench scraper. Perfect, and don't worry about getting chocolate on the sides or the cake stand itself. We can just wipe that off. And that looks pretty good. To cut a clean slice of the cake, I have a mason jar filled with hot water. Boiling is ideal, but you can also use hot sink water as well. And I'm going to take my really sharp knife and I'm going to dip it into the mason jar, let it sit for at least 10 seconds, and wipe it off, making sure to wipe off all of the water. And with that, I'm just going to start cutting into the cake.
Wow, that is so good, and it tastes just like the rainbow cookies that I remember growing up eating. Rainbow cookies are a food that reminds me of my childhood, and when you take a bite into this cake, I hope that it triggers some more memories for you as well, and if you've moved far away, I hope that it reminds you of home. Like I always say, whoever says that girls are complicated, obviously aren't keeping the girls